Hello, Internet users. Don't you think that life has really a funny way of tossing you into a predicament you've never expected? I've been reading other people's stories here, but I never expected I'd be writing one myself. You see, I find myself entangled in a situation where my parents' greed for money and status has been throwing me off into a deep blue sea as of lately. My parents want me to marry a girl I know nothing about, and my only reaction apart from distress is, are you really my parents? Guys, I have a lot of background information to share before I take you into the gist of the story, cause it's important for context. I, 29 male, have uh, spent a significant part of my life feeling like mere accessories in my parents' lives. The love, care, and guidance one expects from parents were conspicuously absent. My parents, if I can even call them that, were more like disinterested roommates, sharing a space but never really sharing their lives. Their neglect was a constant reminder of how ignorant that they've been as parents. They never gave a damn about, well, anything to do with parent-teacher conferences or anything. My parents used to text the teacher in advance, telling her that they were out of town. Of course, they were lying and at their place. They used to send my nanny to go with me. And One day, I broke my leg playing basketball and all my parents did was lend the car to our caretaker so he could take me to the hospital. When I returned with a plaster on my leg, they asked my nanny to stay by my side, 24-7, and not to mention they paid a hefty sum to her for this demand. Their neglect has been so constant that I can't even say that I was brought up by my parents, because technically I was raised and looked after by the caretaker and my nanny. However, there's another side of them apart from their negligence as parents, their dictatorship. You see... There's an authoritarian inside my dad, Henry, who tells him how to dictate my life, how to take control and keep surveillance of my every wrong move, and who also tells him how to punish me. I'm sure everybody must have their own darkness and phobias, but you know what mine is? I'm afraid of an empty closet. By closet, I mean the standalone piece of furniture. There's an empty closet inside the storeroom, and whenever I did anything wrong or something that made my dad mad, he'd ask me to sit inside the closet. He used to close the door and would ask me to reflect on my mistake. Nobody was allowed in unless my dad dictated the deadline for his deadly measure, and I grew up not having a closet. Rather, I chose to have a chest of drawers and a clothing rack. Why am I telling you this? Well... You must understand that although I hate my parents because they neglected me, I'm also influenced by the way they dictate my life, and yes, they still do. And I can't help but let that happen because I see no other way to separate myself from them. I can't leave the house because if I do, I won't be able to continue my job. My dad has his eyes and ears everywhere. He'll definitely make my life hell by threatening anybody who likes to offer me a job. Where does his power come from? Well, my dad owns this big company, which has many branches in various other fields. He rules the state in terms of almost every important thing. We're in the trade, manufacturing, and innovating business, and it's a lot if you ask me. He's just too greedy for the power and the money that I can't even say I'll ever inherit what he owns. At least I'm glad to not inherit his greed. My mother, Jean, on the other hand, is another nightmare-inducing creation of God. She cares about her kitty parties and torturing the servants with her tantrums. I hate her when she throws a nicely cooked meal in the trash just because she doesn't like how it's presented. The irony is that she does not even know how to cook food. I'm not blaming her, though. Both my parents have had a financially strong background. They've been privileged, no kidding. All my mom cares about is her makeup, her jewelry, and her status. She only wears clothing from brands like Versace, Louis Vuitton, and Chanel. No, she doesn't really care about the money she spends because status is everything to her. Our company has a cosmetic branch as well. She's the director of that branch, and my parents earn as they spend. Again, I provide this information to help you understand how hard it's been to live with my parents who stopped being parents the moment I was born. As a result of it all, I grew up feeling detached from them. I've always sought solace in relationships and friendships I found on the way. 
My friends teased me as they saw how I was going to be the CEO of my dad's company. One thing even they realized after meeting my dad is that he can give me the role of manager, but never the role of CEO. Frankly speaking, I don't want to be the CEO, because I don't want to end up like him. In the absence of my parents' love and care, I turned out to be a jerk, who was always hungry for attention. I was famous in high school, and even in college for my good looks, but looks alone can't take you far in life, can they? Realizing how fatal it is to be an attention seeker, I chose to follow a different path. Eventually, I built a life for myself that was completely opposite of my parents and opposite of my old self. I stopped being the needy one, I preferred minimalism. After college, my dad offered me a position in his company, but I told him that I'd get experience in a different company first, before taking the position he was offering. It was for two reasons. One, it helped me escape the grasp of my father. Two, I knew how demanding my dad could be. So, I had to be prepared before taking on the role. He seeks perfectionism, and all I could offer him was inexperienced opinions and errors. Now, because my parents are like this, I don't know what step I should take in order to escape the crisis that's been making me lose my sleep lately. The crisis is actually one of the recent and most terrible developments in my life. I don't know if I should dodge the bullets or let myself get caught in the catastrophe. The catastrophe began with the proposal, an announcement rather, delivered with the enthusiasm of reading a grocery list. They had arranged for me to marry a woman I've never met. A quote business deal was how they described it. Their lack of concern for my feeling or desires was stark. They had picked a stranger, a, a woman I've never met, and presented this union as a strategic merger of families, a phrase usually reserved for corporate boardrooms. At first, I received a call from my dad, who ordered me to come home on time, and if I had any meetings, he wanted me to cancel them immediately because he needed me at the dinner table. It's pretty lame to say this, but we always have a family dinner, which includes my dad sitting on the head chair, my mom making weird faces while eating her food, and who I'd pray for it all just to end quickly. So back to what happens at the dinner. My dad told me that I've been required to get married to a girl and they've chosen for me. First, I choked on my first bites of steak, and second, I could not swallow it after what he said to me. I looked at him in disbelief, but he did not care and just continued his announcement. He said that if I refuse, he would disown me. I mean, how quick my dad was to come up with this threat makes him look like a grim reaper to me. I said, how come, dad? I mean, I do even know the girl, do I? He responded that I did not have to know her. The only thing that I needed to know was that she was important, and I needed to become her husband. I inquired about why he thought that she was important, but... He asked me to not be too interested in things that I should not be interested in. I asked him, what if I could not live a happy life with the girl? He said that if I wanted, I could still see other girls outside of marriage, but I have to take the responsibility of making sure my wife-to-be did not come to know about it. You know how stormy it feels inside when you have so much to say and question, but you just can't? Because a storm's sitting in front of you. I know I'm 29 years old, but not old enough to maybe go against that man directly. I still gathered courage and went, I'm already seeing someone I wish to marry. There was a stark silence in the room, and I bet it was dramatic enough for me to say that even the servants were looking at one another's faces. My mom, who was eating her food silently so far, unfazed by how the conversation was going between me and father, suddenly got irritated and spit on her plate. She complained that a hair came into her mouth, and she threatened the servant to take away the plate before she threw it on the floor, and asked them to send a cup of coffee to her room. She stormed out without saying anything to me or dad, and then my dad began. He said only one thing to me. He asked me to forget the girl that I was dating for a few days, mind you. He said for a few days. This means he was serious when he said that I could have extramarital affairs, and they'd have no problem with it. Now, this is not even the main catastrophe that's shaken my life. There's something more cynical about my parents and their cunning that has been on my feet all day. 
So this all little announcement thing happened a week ago. Yesterday, I finally gathered some courage to tell my parents that I'm no puppet of him. I regret admitting this, but all I was going to say to my dad is that I'm not going to marry just anyone. Yes, that's demanding of courage, you know, but what did I get? I got to know the truth. Or maybe just a hint of something really game-changing about what my parents have demanded of me. Let me tell you this. I went to see my dad in his room yesterday, and my mom was also there. I was just standing near the door when I heard my mom asking, Do you think we should tell Marshall about it? Ah, your foolish son would crash the plan if he'd come to know about the truth. We need the girl because she's the half-owner of the company I'm running, and I just want your son to get complete ownership of the company for me. My mom said, He's not only my son, we will have to tell him the truth eventually that this girl is like a very important asset to us. This is where I stop because this is all I heard so far. I pondered for so many hours about what was really going on and what should be moved before deciding to come to the internet. I'm writing this post so that people read it, and if any of you come up with an idea or suggestion, then please do. One thing is crystal clear, I don't want to marry the girl even if she's important to my family, but I see no solution to the issue. Top comment from the updated post. Comment number one. Your parents' approach to this marriage proposal is undoubtedly a difficult situation to handle. It's clear they have their own motives and don't seem to consider your feelings in this matter. Marrying somebody without knowing them or having connection is a big decision, and it's okay to stand up for what you believe in. Have you thought about sitting down with your parents to have an open and honest conversation about your concerns? It might be challenging, but communication could help clarify the situation and possibly find a middle ground. Comment number two. OP, the level of control your parents have is off the charts, and it's seriously not okay. Time to cut the cord and put your foot down. Reach out to pros, break free from this crazy situation, and look out for number one. You. Show them you won't play their game anymore. Your happiness is the name of the game, and it's high time you win. You've got the strength to make it happen. Stand tall and take charge. Update number one. Hey, people. It's OP here, and firstly, I want to thank all of you for your kind and supportive comments. As well as the helpful advice, I believe dealing with the situation will not be easy for me. I thought that I might talk to some sense into my parents, but that seems to be impossible now. In the previous post, I told you about my parents wanting me to marry a girl, correction, a stranger, because according to what I've overheard, she's the asset for them. I can tell you how desperate my parents are about the marriage between me and that girl. They arranged for a meeting between me and that girl, whose name I recently got to know. Lara. 31 and female, and before the meeting, my dad warned me against doing anything to give the idea that I was not happy with the arrangement. I asked him why he was so keen on throwing me into a marriage that would be loveless. Can you believe what he said to me? He said that I would be useless to him if I did not marry the girl. He said he would not want his own son to turn into somebody who did not know how to maintain him and his family's status. I walked with my hands down in the hallway and took a deep breath. Before entering the hall where everybody was, I had thought that the girl must be followed by her parents, but to my surprise she came alone. Weird, isn't it? I was flabbergasted at the sight of her. She was wearing a royal blue velvet suit and a bracelet watch in her left hand. I almost thought that she was at a business event where she was going to seal the deal. I got a very um, domineering vibe from her, just like my dad. Soon I was asked to sit down by my parents across from her. They asked her some questions and the important thing to notice was that they behaved meekly in front of her as if they did not want to offend her in any way. In my mind, I was waiting to ask her the only two questions, and question number one was, why did she say yes to marrying a complete stranger, and was she being forced to? Not to mention, I did not get to ask either of them. In any case, the meeting isn't really the reason why I'm writing this post. Actually, it's about the aftermath. My parents had made sure to make me kneel down and beg for that girl's hand, or else they could literally send me to hell. 
Once the meeting was over, we sent off the girl who remained composed and reserved to the very end. My dad looked at me and said, Prepare for the wedding, and I countered, saying, It's not possible for me, Dad. I can't do this. You can ask anything from me, but this I can't leave the girl I love for a stranger. As soon as I finished saying this, my mom said, But the girl left you, son. I felt like the ground under my feet was no longer there, and I looked at her and asked her what the heck she meant by that. She asked me to call my girlfriend Riley and ask her to meet me. So I call Riley and ask her to meet me. She said that she's not available, and I asked her what it meant, and she said she could not continue the relationship. I could not believe what I've heard next, and Riley said that she was no longer in love with me, and I was so taken aback that I asked her if my parents said something to her. It became clear soon that they did, because Riley said that she had no time for a guy who was going to marry somebody else, and she was clearly not getting anything out of me. She asked me not to bother her ever again and hung up the phone, and I just stood there while my parents gave me a look that they were pleased. My mom informed me about her meeting with Riley the previous day as she had gone to offer her a sum so she could leave me, and mom said that she did not even refuse once and accepted the money gesture as if she was waiting for it. Hearing my mom's words broke my heart. I did not know Riley could be such a despicable person, while it's true that there's no one more vile and despicable than my parents, they have mastered the art. They made sure to leave me helpless and with no choice whatsoever, and for a very long time, I wasn't really in my senses after Riley's betrayal. She had just left, and I was struggling to move on. So posting on the internet was the last thing that came to my mind, yet I came. So if any of you have any advice for me, then you're most welcome because I look forward to it. Update number two. Hey guys, I'm back for yet another update. Thank you for reading and leaving comments so far. Unfortunately, things are just getting worse from here and crazier. I thought I had a chance of stopping it, but I have to inform you that Lara and I got married this past week. It all happened so damn quickly that I did not have a chance to sit and write another post, but I have an update for you. The wedding was a lavish one and uh, the luxury as it could be. All kinds of businessmen from all kinds of companies were invited because they were my parents' friends, and Lara and I were busy posing for pictures, and that's all, so... The wedding was, well, luxury as death. But that's something I wanted to quickly mention in this update. I have something to reveal, and it might lead you to have your jaws dropped. As I said, I could not say no to the wedding, as if I had that choice. Still, I wanted for the one last time to do something, so just a day or two before the wedding, I called Laura and expressed my wish to meet her without anyone's knowledge. She responded by saying that she also wanted to meet me for something, so we arranged to meet at a restaurant and went straight to the VIP section. Grabbing an opportunity, I decided to ask Laura why she was interested in marrying a stranger, like me. She said that she could not care less about that. I was surprised and in awe, seeing her unfazed by her own words. She pulled out some papers from her bag and had the audacity to ask me to sign them. I asked her, what the hell is this? She replied that she knew I wasn't interested in the proposal of marriage, so she thought it'd be great to just have a contract until everything got what they wanted out of this marriage. At first, I asked her how she found out about it. She admitted something even more shocking. She claimed to know everything about me, and I pointed out that if she was truly of knowing everything about me, then she must have known that I wanted nothing more than this wedding not to happen. Lara responded that we didn't have a choice. Her demeanor was so recklessly calm that it irked me. I mean, come on. How come she was at ease with how everything was unfolding? As it turned out, she was waiting to ask me about the contract. I signed it which stated it was for a maximum of two years and it seemed like a reasonable deal, but I must tell you that Laura gave me that vibe. What do we call it? Oh yes, a uh, sus? She looked suspiciously dangerous to me as if she was concealing something else beneath her skin. I think tackling with her in the future would require me to know everything about her too. Well, after the wedding, guess who's the happiest? <laughs> My parents. Update number three. Hey, it's OP again, and I'm back with yet another update. I can't wait to tell you what the heck I found out. 
I know it's been a while since I wrote another update, but trust me, I'm here to reveal something awful and scary at the same time. After the wedding, I asked somebody to dig into Lara's profile, and oh man, ask me about this woman's history, it's filled with so many twists like a roller coaster. Lara's been into drugs since high school. She was involved with a group of drug dealers, and she even helped them with some of the deals, and the most horrible thing I got to know is that she and her boyfriend got addicted to drugs. The boy came so close to dying of an OD that it had become such a high-profile case. The police started investigating to find the drug dealers, so to protect this daughter, my father-in-law interrupted the investigation and sent his daughter abroad. Lara remained in Denmark for a year or two until the flame extinguished, and she also went to rehab there. Apart from this, I also got to know that my father-in-law is bedridden because he's in the last stage of cancer. He owns 40% shares of the company, and my dad and my father-in-law are basically the partners. And after his death, the shares would be owned by his daughter. That's how he arranged it. Now, it all makes sense as to why my dad was so damn eager to order me to marry Lara. It's not my hunch, but something that I've confirmed recently. Lara and I are a few months into our marriage, and my dad asked me to get as close to her as humanly possible. He wants me to win her heart, so that he can later manipulate her into giving the rest of the shares to him. But my foolish dad is so wrong here, he didn't even know what kind of trouble he was bringing into our household. My dad may think that he can dictate her life like he does mine, but he's so wrong about this one because Laura would never let that happen. Let me explain. Maybe my parents didn't know about her dark past, or maybe they were just too foolish to believe that she wasn't a threat. I think like my parents, Laura must have her cunning reasons to get married to me, and I'm going to find out about them soon. I'm on it. Update number four. Hey everyone, so I'm back with another update, and how are you doing? It's been a crazy business to deal with the mess these past few days, and I've also been away for long, that I could not know how so many of you were eagerly waiting for my next update. Well, I'm here to give you one, and it's a sizzling one. You see, Lara's father passed away a few weeks ago, and since then my dad and, well, to my surprise, Lara have been competing against each other to secure the highest position in the company. The position of CEO. However, I'm the one who caused both of them to lose their chance at it. I did not tell you this, but as part of my dad's plan to get me married to Lara, it required him to give away 30% of the shares to me. I could not gather the courage to refuse the marriage, but I did put a condition in front of Dad. I asked him to give me 30% out of the 45% of the shares that he owned if he really wanted me to marry. After meeting Laura and signing the contract that very night, I told my dad that I didn't care about my life anymore, so if he really wanted to use me, then he'd have to give me the shares. He seemed to have no choice, or maybe he just thought that Lara would ultimately bring more shares with her, and he'd have the ultimate power as the owner of the company. The board of directors initially chose Lara to be the CEO, not only because she owned some shares, but also because of her expertise in the field. You see, having completed her MBA and worked with high-profile companies for several years, she seemed to be the perfect choice in their eyes. However, I could not let that happen. Initially, I did not have beef with Lara, but once I discovered her evil intentions, I could not just stand by. She turned out to be worse than my dad. Shockingly, she cheated on me just two months after we were married, and what made it even worse was her desire to use me, much like dad, to eventually acquire the shares from my father. She aimed to secure ultimate ownership of the company, so I took action to thwart her plans. I presented the evidence against Laura to the board of directors, and they swiftly removed her from the position of CEO, putting her shares up for sale. I seized the opportunity using my father's funds to secure those shares, and I convinced my dad that this was a chance for me to step into the business world, proposing a deal where I promised to return his shares with an additional 15% from my own portfolio. He agreed, thinking it was a great arrangement, however, a hiccup arose. My father's finances weren't sufficient to purchase all the shares taken from Lara, so I scrambled, pulling every resource I could to acquire those crucial shares we needed. 
Suddenly, my dormant business education found its purpose, fueled by a desire to counter the insidious greed that had plagued our lives through my father and Laura. Now, I'm in the midst of deciding what to do with my dad. Update number five. It's good to know so many people are showing their shock over Laura's plans. I'm just so happy these past few days. I finally got rid of Laura and my father as well. Laura's case reopened as I submitted the evidence against her in court, and I know this wasn't necessary, but I'm afraid that I don't agree with you. Those drug dealers were never arrested. The so-called overdose guy almost died, and here we have Laura, walking around proudly in happy daylight. Trust me, I was mad. I got to know that she wanted to use me to get our family share. She has to bear the consequences of her actions now. As for my dad, well, I did not give him the shares, which was obvious enough. He still has 17% of the company's shares, and I have over 73. With my influence, I made sure that he had no choice but to become the head of one of the most unprofitable branches at the most. Finally, I'm free of the two horrible people who tried to tame and use me, just so they could achieve their greedy goals. I have intentionally uh, bought a place for myself. My dad still curses me, and my mom curses me as well to this day, but you know what? I want to live life on my own terms, and I now know how I can achieve that feat. Since this is going to be my final update, I would like to thank those who have supported me on this journey. Your comments and suggestions mean a lot. What do you think Riley's doing right now? I'm sure she must have spent all the money my mom gave her. Well, I'm not going to talk about that cheating woman. I hope she meets a guy who will just be like her. A gold digger. Comment number one of the updates. Holy moly, OP, you should have dropped the nuclear bomb on that family drama. I mean, seriously, taking over the lion's share of the company, putting Laura in her place, and relegating your dad to the land of the unprofitable? That's a power move of epic proportions. You've shown those puppeteers who's boss. And it's you, my friend. This tale is like a Shakespearean tragedy meets a high-octane thriller with a dash of revenge served ice cold. Bravo, OP. Here's a life of absolute freedom and success for you. Comment number two. Wow, OP. You've shown incredible resilience and determination to break free from the topic clutches of your family. Taking charge of the company's share was a bold move, and it seems like you're finally steering your life in the right direction. Kudos to you for standing up against injustice and making sure that justice was served. The way you handled the shares and outsmarted your father and Laura is nothing short of impressive. Here's to hoping for a bright future, where you're finally the master of your own fate. So we just read a couple of the top comments. I want to hear from you guys. Do you agree most with comment number one, or do you agree more with comment number two? Let me know your opinions of this story down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think of OP, because not everyone in the comment section was supporting OP. Guys, if you've ever been in a situation like this and you want to share your side of the story, maybe you've been through almost something identical as the people in today's story. Let me know your thoughts. My name's Mr. Redito. I narrate these sort of stories every single day. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe for daily videos. I'll see you tomorrow, and remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.